This is Twit. Give us a 30,000 foot view. What is Dependency Track and what's it used for? Absolutely. So Dependency Track is really about uh, tracking all of the components that are used in, in various applications that an organization might create by themselves or uh, use uh, in terms of uh, commercial off-the-shelf software. It's really about tracking all the, the mostly open source, but it's not just an open source issue. It's about tracking all the components and, um, and because we're tracking them as bill of materials, we can discover if they have any known vulnerabilities in them. And is this something that would look at, say, uh, my Git repo and analyze it from there, or do I have to do some sort of setup to start using this? It's part of a larger ecosystem. Um, there, there's a, uh, some related projects, uh, one of which is Dependency Check, for example, uh, that this pro the Dependency Track actually builds on top of. But uh, Dependency Check would actually be something that would be used in a uh, continuous integration style environment where if you're checking okay. out code from from github uh, you would actually run your analysis at build time and the result of that analysis can be uploaded automatically uh, to dependency track so we we have an ongoing record of all of the components that are used during build time and with something like dependency check which apparently is being used with this is that something that i could even have the continuous integration system like abort and not generate uh, uh, products to sh to uh, in install Absolutely. So uh, Dependency Check is actually a really great project. Um, I've been contributing to it f uh, since about 2012. Uh, it was started by a, a security researcher and engineer by the name of Jeremy Long. And uh, essentially what it does is it, it looks at uh, files uh, on the file system uh, and tries to, deter uh, tries to extract evidence from those files and uh, match them up. With, uh, with with known CVEs in the National Vulnerability Database. And uh, because it looks at files, uh, build time analysis is, is one of the primary objectives for that. I actually wrote the, the Jenkins plugin uh, for mm. that ecosystem. So uh, yeah, you can absolutely put uh, uh, builds in a failed or warning state depending on if there's any new issues found. So a dependency track isn't doing that. So what's, what's dependency tracks uh, um, problem at solving? Absolutely. So uh, it's part of a larger problem. Uh, it's we we as developers we look at it as a as a continuous integration t type of, of problem. But it's it's really this issue is 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 far beyond just uh, build time of, of software. This is really a supply chain issue. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it affects uh, everything from developing software to um, running that software in production to um, buying, you know, drones or any, any kind of Internet of Thing type of appliance, how mm. do we track the components that are used in build time or the applications that we run in our environment or use as a consumer? Uh, how do we track those components and, uh, and discover if there's any known vulnerabilities in them? And just to get a sense of how frequently there's a new known vulner vulnerability, um, I mean, I bet I bet there's some of our listeners are probably thinking, well, there's like one new bug report a month or something. But can you give me a sense of like the the flow, the speed of which CVEs come out? Yeah. So it's this is really there's some there's been a lot of really interesting research uh, as of late. Uh, one of the first reports was was based in uh, 2012 by a company called Aspec and, and later Contrast Security. But uh, in that report, I, I really like to reference that report because it was very specific, even though it's a little bit old uh, as of now. But they looked at Maven Central. And they analyzed the 31 most popular uh, libraries and frameworks at the time. So this is mm -hmm. this is Java specific, and they they came to the conclusion that 26% of all requests to Maven Central were for things that had known vulnerabilities in them. So these are applications that people are building at that time, and 26% of all the components that they were requesting had known vulnerabilities in them. Um, there's been a lot of other studies since then. And they've basically come to the same types of conclusions where uh, visibility is is really the number one issue. And that's why I created the Jenkins plugin for that. And uh, I also created a Sonar Cube plugin for the dependency check project as well. Uh, but visibility is, is, a, is a huge problem in this because in our development environments, 
they will absolutely tell us if we're using a deprecated method or if we're introducing a performance uh, crippling uh, loop, for example. My IDE is smart enough to, to tell me that, but uh, without commercial uh, support, my IDE does not tell me that I just uh, chose to use an old vulnerable version of Spring Framework that now has uh, remote code execution capabilities. Uh, it doesn't tell me that. So visibility is a huge problem uh, going forward.